Hello, welcome back. I hope you have enjoyed the previous two algorithmic paradigms, divide and conquer and greedy. I hope you found them useful and interesting. Starting from this week, we'll talk about our third algorithmic paradigm, dynamic programming, which is possibly the most tested strategy at tech interviews. So you want to make sure that you pay attention and learn it well. Okay, let's dive in. So on the topic of dynamic programming, we will also be using case studies. Um, some of the problems that we'll look at are actually the ones we saw before. For instance, in this first lecture, we will be revisiting the coin change problem. Recall that the problem is given a target value, we need to use the fewest possible coins to make change. Also recall that our greedy algorithm for the coin change problem failed when the set of coin values is 1, 4, and 9, and when the target is 12 cents, for instance. Today, we will design an efficient algorithm that can solve this case. Not only that, the algorithm we designed today will be able to solve any cases of the coin change problem. So unlike greedy, today our algorithm will never fail. Now let's imagine the process of solving this problem using a decision tree. Each edge or decision represents the choice of another coin. We start with the target value 12, for instance. We can choose either a 1 cent coin, a 4 cent coin, or a 9 cent coin. This will reduce the target to 11, 8, and 3. So now we're looking at three possible sub-problems. If we choose a 1 cent coin, we reduce the problem to 10. If we choose a 4 cent coin, we reduce it to 7. If we choose a 9 cent coin, we reduce it to 2, and so on. So here are a few questions for you. First, does this tree grow infinitely? No. Second question, so when do we know to stop? Each branch of the decision tree ends when the remaining value is reduced to zero. Now, third question, what is an optimal solution represented in this decision tree? So we know a candidate solution is represented by a path that travels from the root 12 to a leaf node zero. A path with the shortest length from the root to a leaf zero will be an optimal solution. Some observations we have here. Such a decision tree does not grow infinitely. That is, it can be constructed in a finite number of steps. Each path from the root 12 to a leaf zero represents a solution. And an optimal solution has the shortest length. Although the tree can grow very large, there are a limited number of subproblems, and many of them actually repeat. If we look at this decision tree again, we notice that the subproblem 8 appears here and also here. The subproblem 7 appears here, here, and the subproblem 6 appears here, here, here. So a lot of those subproblems repeat. That's another important observation. These observations suggest a practical approach to finding an optimal solution to this problem. First, we know that if we can solve all the subproblems, the original problem is solved. Second, to avoid repeatedly solving the same subproblem, we can solve it the first time we see it and store the result. Next time when we see it, we don't need to recompute it, and we can just use the result we stored. So that was really the idea. So our first step is to look for a recurrence relation that relates the solution to a problem of size n to one or more problems of size less than n. Now this algorithm, mean coins, takes a target value as input and returns the minimum number of coins to make change. We can then use this recurrence relation to build up our optimal solution from a base case or base cases. First, the base case. We say that the target value is zero, um, then we do not choose any coin. This is still an optimal solution. During the computation, n could go less than zero. 
we let the result to be infinitely large. Why is that? We'll see this very soon. Here comes the recurrence. The problem n can be divided into three subproblems: n minus one, when we choose a one cent coin; n minus four, when we choose a four cent coin; and n minus nine, when we choose a nine cent coin. There are only these three possibilities. So we choose the one that has the smallest number of coins, and then plus one. Now let's answer this why question. When the input becomes less than zero, we certainly do not want to choose that option. So we let the result to be an infinitely large value. Hope this is clear to you now. In fact, such a recursive algorithm can be used to solve the coin change problem with any set of coin values. So its generalized version is this: given a set of coins with k different values, we treat k as a constant. The base case is the same, and again, when the input n is less than zero, we set it to an infinitely large number. We can reduce the problem by solving now k different subproblems, and an optimal solution will be the one with the minimum number plus one. If we implement this algorithm directly like this using a recursion. We are essentially constructing a version of the decision tree and explore it, but we know many subproblems repeat. How can we avoid solving the same subproblems repeatedly? Here is a faster algorithm. We can construct a table and create a list A with indices from zero to n. It stores the solution of the problem with input values ranging from zero to n. Now let's use the coin system one for nine again and the target value of twelve. We construct a table storing the result of target value being zero, all the way to twelve. When n is zero, that's the base case. We know its value should be zero. When n is one, the options are a zero, a minus three, and a minus a. We can ignore all the ones with negative input, so that'll be a zero plus one. So a one will be one. Now a two. So the options will be a one, a minus two, a minus seven. So we can ignore the negative ones, and then we know a two will be a one plus one. So that'll be two. Now a three. So we know the answer would be similarly a two plus one. So a three will be three. Now let's look at a four. So for a four, the options are a three, a zero, and a minus five. We can ignore this one, and we look at a three and a zero. Which one is smaller? So a zero is smaller. So we know a four will be a zero plus one. So that'll be one, and so on. Please pause the video and figure out the rest of the table on your own. Here we have the table field, and we see a twelve is three. So this is the solution to the original problem. When the target value is twelve, we need only as few as three coins to make the change. You may wonder now, do we know which three coins? Now let's find out. You can use this table and trace back to compute a12. We examine three subproblems: a11, a8, and a3. We check the table and know that a8 is the smallest, so we know how we get to a12. Then we look at a8. Its computation is based on two options: a4 and a7. If we just ignore the negative inputs. We check the table again and see which one is smaller. That'll be a4. Last, we look at a4. The options are a3 and a0. We check the table and know that a0 is smaller. Now we know the path getting to a12. That is through a8, a4, and a. Zero. 
So from 12 to 8, 12 minus 8, that's a 4 cent coin. From 8 to 4, that's another 4 cent coin. From 4 to 0, that's the third 4 cent coin. So we know the three coins are three 4 cent coins. This is the process of tracing back and getting the detail of the solution. Now let's formalize this algorithm. We know we will not implement the recursive algorithm directly since it is not very efficient by calling and solving many repeating subproblems. Now we write an iterative algorithm that constructs the table we saw on the previous slide. We use a list A to store the table. We know the first element A0 is 0. That's the base case. Now for the for loop. We use the recurrence relation and write this. So ai will be 1 plus the minimum of the 3. Then we can return the last element of a. That will be an. Note that we need another function val here to handle the cases when the indices become negative. That's when we need to return an infinitely large number. I hope this is clear to you now. What's our next question? Yes, the complexity. This val function takes a constant time. This mean coins function has a for loop that runs in linear time. So the overall complexity of this algorithm is big O of n. It's a really efficient algorithm. If we want to know the detail of the solution, say which coins should we choose, such a traceback algorithm also takes a linear time. Please feel free and write that algorithm as well. So the way we solved the coin change problem is called dynamic programming. Dynamic programming can be used when the original problem can be decomposed into smaller problems. These smaller subproblems repeat. Dynamic programming solves all subproblems in a sequential fashion. Why the name, you may wonder, what's dynamic and why it's programming? Programming refers to the constructing of a table process, and a dynamic means the sequential process of building the table. Some exercise for you, in addition to implementing the algorithm we discussed in this lecture, can you also write the generalized algorithm? Okay, hope you found the dynamic programming solution to the coin change problem interesting. We will see two more problems this week. Stay tuned.